Okay, guys. You know, unfortunately, many Christians would have you believe that wallowing in doubt and self-condemnation is a sign of humility, of a truly humble heart before God. And that's actually a lie. It's a lie from the enemy. True humility is defined as the personal quality of being free from arrogance and pride and having an accurate estimate of one's worth. It is not self-condemnation or self-loathing. And it is acknowledging where you stand in relation to God. Um, so before we're saved, you know, we need humility to recognize that we're hopeless sinners who don't measure up and we need the Savior. Amen. Um, but once we are saved, we don't stay in that place any longer because we recognize where we now stand in Christ Jesus. James 4.10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. He will lift you up. So how can we stand in our armor if we're face down wallowing in doubt, condemnation, and self-pity? In, in one way, we are always in that place of humility as a believer because we have put our our death to our put our old man to death crucified with Christ and we are not you know we are we're aware that our own righteousness is filthy rags so in that way we are humble our own righteousness is filthy rags but believing and standing on what God says about us is so much more important than going by our own estimation which can just vary from day to day depending on our actions and our feelings, right? And it, they're so unreliable. There have been times where I have just been doing good, but feeling really bad about myself, you know? And the other way around as well, I can think of times. And, you know, there's a huge difference between genuine faith and simply doing good to feel good about yourself. And the thing that most people don't realize is that false humility is actually pride. You're probably saying, no way, you know, no way is someone with low self-esteem beating themselves up, struggling with pride. But that's because we tend to see pride as the world defines it. You know, people that are overly confident or they have a smug disposition. But pride in relation to God and our salvation is believing that our estimation of ourselves is more important than God's opinion of us. So if we think higher of ourselves than God does, we are proud. And if we think less of ourselves than God does, we are proud. If we don't surrender to God's will by gratefully accepting what He's done for us, we are proud. We think our opinion is all that, and we say, no, thank you, God. I don't really believe the record you gave of your son or that I am now righteous and set apart and that you delight in me as your beloved child simply because I'm your child. And if we continue to condemn ourselves after God says we are redeemed and our sins are forgiven and will not come into condemnation, we are counting the blood of Jesus an unholy thing and saying we're not saved to the uttermost. It's unbelief and it really won't accomplish anything good. Instead, what we can do is look to God's word and read and truly believe all that he has said about us, about our new identity in Christ because of what he accomplished at his death and resurrection. That's genuine humility. In the past, I've seen myself and others with YouTube channels being accused of pride. And it's because we stand with faith in Christ's finished work. That's all. They call that pride. They think that their unbelief is humility, and it's a shame, really. And I pray that God will open their eyes to the truth, that they'll allow Him to do that. You've probably also noticed, and this is something I've seen quite a bit on YouTube, that, and in my life, you know, around people, 
that that people will often display false humility as a way to gain attention and get people to stroke their ego. It's a form of manipulation, guys. So point them to their identity in Christ instead of playing their game. And in the end, it's better for them. Because their source of self-worth should come from God and not people. You know, for some people, that's like a drug that they're dependent on. And they crave the accolades so much that they'll throw a pity party and invite everybody to it so that the people can say, Oh, no, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. And they get addicted to that instead of just standing in, in the truth of who they are in Christ and getting their self-worth from him. He's an, an anchor that is solid and sure. And uh, you won't be you know, up and down on that roller coaster. So yeah, people that are, that are like that, don't enable and coddle them. Tell them who they are in Christ Jesus. You know, encourage them with the word of God. So I'm about to speak some of the truths of who God says you are now once you've believed on the Lamb of God, sent to take away the sins of the world, our righteous Redeemer, Jesus Christ. You are a born-again child of God and a joint heir with Christ in his inheritance. You are washed, sanctified, and justified by the blood of Jesus. You are a saint the salt of the earth and a light to the world. You are free from condemnation because all of your sins have been forgiven for all time. You are free from the power of sin and a servant of righteousness. You are inseparable from the love of God and are being conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. You are God's temple. You are a sweet aroma manifesting the presence of God. You are not under the law, but under grace. Your old self was crucified with Christ, and you are now alive to God in Christ Jesus. You can rejoice in your troubles and trials. You are more than a conqueror, and you are sufficient because your sufficiency is of God. Okay, I love you guys.